Uh, with me today is Second Lieutenant uh, Carter Wall, who is our cadet commander here at Squadron 86 in San Francisco, Civil Air Patrol. And um, he has been the cadet commander here for how long now? I'd say about, um, well, I think I started quarantine as the cadet commander. Oh my been, gosh. It's been quite a long time. And we almost thought we were going to get rid of these masks, and yet here we are again because of the Delta variant. So, um, we're talking today about the High Altitude Balloon Challenge through Civil Air Patrol, which is being conducted by Stratostar. And uh, there's going to be a number of uh, experiments that are going to be in a control capsule and a flight capsule that is going to be launched somewhere out in the Midwest, I think it's uh, Indiana. And uh, the cadets have come up with a number of different experiments, and they have also come up with a mission patch. And uh, Lieutenant Lamar, could you explain about our mission patch that uh, their cadets voted on? Sure. Um, so, um, if you can see, the mission patch um, is the background is of space um, because we will be sending the balloon into space. Um, in addition, we have our regular squadron patch on the uh, on the banner, which is um, you know the eagle holding the 86 above Earth, which is semi fitting because you know it looks like the eagle may be in space. Um, we also have uh, the 2021 Shadow Star 0436, um, and that's just. Uh, what the mission is um, and then the motto the sky is no longer the limit um, because we are pushing beyond the sky into space um, and can you tell me about the squadron's motto sure the squadron's motto is excellence in action um, because one of the core values of civil air patrol is excellence um, and as squadron 86 um, as a cadet squadron in, um, in san francisco um, we try to exhibit that core value in everything we do, in addition to the other core values, but uh, really we try to show excellence in everything we do, um, and so we are excellent in action. Well, it sounds like participating in this High Altitude Balloon Challenge certainly is excellence in action. I do believe that's correct, sir. So the first uh, experiment is has to do with batteries, just simple AAA batteries. Uh, Lieutenant Wong, can you explain what this experiment is about? Sure. Um, so like uh, Captain Nado said, um, we I do have two AAA batteries here, um, and we're going to keep one on the ground as a control, uh, kind of a control example, um, and we're going to send the other one in the balloon into space. Um, and so before we do launch the balloon, we'll measure uh, the circumference of each, and we'll measure the voltage of each, just to make sure that um, we don't get any off data. Um, and then when we verify that they are the same battery and that there are no differences, uh, we will send one into space um, to measure if it affects the voltage or if it affects the size of the battery. Right, and so what type of um, changes or uh, environmental uh, differences would you expect uh, that might change a battery's performance up in space? Um, in space, I expect the pressure to be a lot, um, to be a lot lower. Yeah, I do expect it to be a lot colder as well. Right, so the temperature would be another factor. Okay, well, I'm interested to find out the results of that experiment. All right, I do too, sir. Uh, so with me now is uh, Cadet Staff Sergeant Emily Liu of Squadron 86. Uh, Emily, are you the Alpha Flight Sergeant, is that right? Well, yes, a Bravo Flight Sergeant. No. Bravo Flight Sergeant, okay, very good. Uh, and uh, Emily has in her hand uh, the next experiment that is going to go up <laughs> in the high altitude balloon. Uh, tell us what you want to do with these marshmallows. So we're basically going to like send them to like the border of space. So we just want to see like with like the low pressure and the like super cold temperatures and how these marshmallows would react when they come back down. So uh, pull out a marshmallow for me. Uh, just so everyone can see, they're kind of squishy. Uh, why is that? Probably the way they were made, right? The marshmallows are just known to be squishy and super, like, airy and fluffy. Just even So I noticed on the package it says jet puffed. Mm. So you think there's uh, quite a bit of air inside the ingredients. Is you would right? assume so, yes. So the lack of pressure could cause it to expand. Mm -hmm. 
that's what we're that's our hypothesis yeah mm -hmm. very interesting so it'll be interesting to see what happens when we get back on the ground uh, tell me are you going to do a taste test after it returns back to earth I don't even know if that's safe, but if it is, most definitely. <laughs> okay, very good. Well, Sergeant Lou, thank you so much for spending time with us explaining about this experiment. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now is uh, Cadet Master Sergeant Ansley Wong of Squadron 86. Ansley, uh, what's your position here in the squadron? Um, I'm the Alpha Flight Commander. Excellent. And uh, how long have you been the Alpha Flight Commander? Uh, I'm not really sure. Like, Months, maybe. Very good. Yeah, good for you. Uh, so Ansley is going to explain about another experiment that we're going to be sending up in our uh, flight capsule. Ansley, what have you got in your hands here? Um, I got some brine shrimp or uh, sea monkeys. Yeah, I've always thought they were sea monkeys. What What is a brine shrimp? Um, they're these little prehistoric sea creatures, and they're in here. And you uh, put this in water and they come alive. Interesting. Um, so, approximately how old do you think these sea monkeys go back uh, in history, in Earth's history? Well, they're prehistoric, probably a couple million years. Yeah, in fact, I've read somewhere it might be as much as 300 million years. Does that sound right? Um, yes, sir. Okay, all right. So, um, we're going to put uh, some that before we put it in water, into a control capsule, and then some into the flight capsule. And then when we retrieve them back, we're going to add water and salt. And we're not sure what's going to happen um, to the one that went up in the flight capsule, but we fully expect the one in the control capsule to come alive. Uh, what do you think is gonna happen? Um, I, I don't know if the thing in space will or it might affect it because it's really cold up there, so it might affect the living conditions. But I mean, they survive this long, so I, I don't know. Let's see what happens. All right. Well, I look forward to seeing the results of this, and uh, I'm sure you'll be uh, there to to see what happens. Oh, by the way, I want to ask you, how small are these things? Uh, really small. Like you have to use a magnifying glass to see them. Okay. Very good. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Sergeant Wong. I sure appreciate your time. My pleasure, sir. We're on. Uh, so with me now is Cadet Second Lieutenant Emmanuel Nascimento. Uh, Emmanuel, uh, what's your position here in Squadron 86? I'm the Cadet Deputy Commander for Operations here in Squadron good. 86. And how long have you been doing that? I've been here for about a week. I just got this position. I used to be the Flight Commander, but now I'm letting other people. Excellent. Well, good for you. Well, I certainly have seen a blossoming of your leadership, and we're really lucky to have you here. Thank you, sir. Um, Lieutenant Nascimento, could you explain what uh, this experiment is going to be about uh, that we have in our hands? So here we have two synchronized uh, digital watches, and what our experiment uh, is trying to see is if we send these to space, will something, whether it's pressure or temperature, uh, affect the way uh, that it calculates time? Will it be faster than this one that's staying on Earth? Will it be slower? Uh, maybe this just explodes. Maybe the battery dies. Um, personally, I think nothing will change if it was a real clock where it had hands no like i i don't think it would be synchronized it would probably slow down something with the pressure would change um, but this is definitely an interesting experiment so let me ask you uh do you think it's uh theoretically possible that the watch that stays on the ground might be different than the watch that goes up to the near space altitude because of the difference in the, the, the distance from the center of gravity of the Earth? Hmm. I personally think it would have to be, again, a regular big old clock uh, for it to change. There may be a possibility of something somehow 
slowing it down or maybe it stops for a few seconds um, with the battery, but I personally think it's going to be the same time. Uh, my guess is you're right. Uh, be interesting to see what the results actually are, if any, uh, which might be a result in and of itself if there is no change. That would be interesting if it came back exploded. Yes, I, that would be interesting. <laughs> Well, Lieutenant Nesimento, thank you very much for your time, and uh, I'm sure you'll be here when we get the uh, capsule back from uh, outer space. Yes, sir, and thank you for having this experience. Thank you. Thank you for being here for this. Okay. Uh, with me now is uh, Cadet Airman Benjamin Chow. And Benjamin, uh, how long have you been in Civil Air Patrol? Now? I've been in Civil Air Patrol for maybe three months. Oh my, how do you like it so far? I think it's it's really good. Like, I I met, I met a lot of new people, and I think I, I'm having a good time so far. So you were there at the meeting when we talked about the different experiments that we're going to put in this high altitude balloon challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, tell me a little bit about the experiment you have in your hand right now. Uh, this is a piece of x-ray film usually used at the dentist to check if you have cavities. And x-rays will hit it and then it will like develop and it will like, take, start to take a picture of it. And we're going to have two of them. One of them is going to be the control and the other one is going to be sent to space. And we're going to see how the radiation in space affects the x-ray film because, um, yeah, we're just going to see how a different environment in space is going to change it. Do you think there's going to be enough of a difference that it might show up on the film after we develop it? I think it might show up a little bit, but not like too much, but we'll have to wait to see. Okay, very good. So uh, I have to ask you, um, how did you guys come up with the motto for this mission. Uh, did you vote on it? Uh, or? Well, the motto is, the sky is no longer the limit. And, you know, there's like a popular, um, what, what are you, idiom? And it's like, the sky's the limit, meaning like, oh, no matter, like, we can, you can do anything, the sky's the limit. And then here we're saying the sky is no longer the limit, meaning we can do more than anything. We can do pretty much everything we want. Excellent. And the last question I have for you is, what is the Squadron 86 motto? The Squadron 86 motto is excellence in action and excellence in everything we do. Excellent. Well, I have to say I'm very proud of you and thank you so much for spending time explaining about this experiment. Uh, I'm sure we'll have a lot of fun uh, finding out what the results are.